Marhaban, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh And very good morning Hala Antum Jahizun Fal Nabdaq I think we can start now Today I'm going to discuss Accounting for retailing About how we're going to record Transaction, sales, purchases Payment of cash or receipt of cash uh, If you are using uh, either perpetual or periodic inventory system. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to focus on retail business operation where business buy or purchase item from the supplier and then sell, sell the item to their customer. So the main part of retail business operation for accounting is we're going to determine the profit. So, in order to determine the profit, we need to determine the cost of sale. The cost of sales, and that will be the biggest portion of expense, the biggest portion of the expense in retail business. So, and also finally is your inventory balance at the end of accounting period. Teacher? So, excuse me. So, for this process, the business acquire inventory from the supplier and then they're going to sell the inventory to the customer and finally, they're going to collect cash from the customer. If they sold the inventory by credit, I mean they're going to have account receivable after a few weeks, the customer will make payment to the business. So, this is the, the process involved. By using the cash received from the customer, the business will purchase more inventory. Yeah, this is the cycle. So I did give examples yeah, last week about this situation, whereby, for example, you purchase 100 units okay, of a calculator. I call it calculators. Yeah, this is an important item for you. So when you purchase this item, 100 units at $50 each. So the value of your inventory now is 500. This is your inventory value, 500. Okay. You can purchase by credit. There will be your account payable. Or you can make payment by cash. So you're going to reduce the cash balance. Later on, okay, you sell the item. Yeah, you sell the item 50 unit at price of $80 each. So your total sale will be 4,000. 50 multiplied by 80, that gives you 4,000. So from this example, I want to ask these four questions. Number one, what is your Total sales, your total sales, your total sales or revenue from this question will be 4,000. This is your total sales. Yeah, 4,000. Okay. What is the cost of sale? The cost of sale refers to the cost of item sold to your customer. I repeat, the cost of sale is the cost of item sold to your customer. So we sold 50 units, 50 units, correct, yeah? And then the price per unit is $50. So our cost of sales, cost of goods sold is 2,500. So we got 2,500, very good, 2,500. So this is your sale, your revenue, this is your cost, your expense. So the difference here, gross profit is 1,500. Why I call it as gross profit? Because there are other expenses, there are other revenues not included. This is merely from your retail activities. You might receive income maybe from commissions, you might receive income from rental, 
you need to pay electricity, you need to pay for delivery charges. So this is what we call as gross profit. You need to add more revenues minus all the expenses to get the net profits. Okay, so these items, these items fall under your income statement. Income statement. Yeah, this item is under your income statement. And finally, when I told you what is the balance of your inventory, yes, originally you have 5,000. This is your balance. This is your inventories. Since you sold 50 units, the balance of your inventory is no more $5,000. The balance of your inventory will be 100 minus 50. So that gives you 50 unit. 50 unit multiplied by per dollar you have $50. So your total inventory value is $2,500. Yeah, your asset, your inventory is not 5,000. Why? Because you sold half of it, 50. So your balance of inventory assets is only 2,500. So these are the things that we're going to do, yeah, either using perpetual or periodic. Our aim is we want to determine your total sale, total cost of sale, and then the balance of inventory. By knowing your total sales and total cost of sale, this will help you to determine the gross profit of the business. I repeat, by knowing the total amount of sales and the total cost of sale, it help you to determine what is your gross profit. What is your gross So in the condensed income statement, yeah, you are required to report your sale. This is the important, yeah, sale. The cost of sale, sales less cost of sale give you gross profit. And then you're going to minus with three types of expenses. First, selling and distribution expenses. Second, administrative expenses. And finally, number three, finance expenses. So this will be the format of the retail income statement. We have sale, net sale. What is net sale? Sales minus return. Yeah, sales minus sales return. This is your net sale. Sales, return and allowances. Okay. Your cost of sale Sales minus the cost of sale give you your gross profit. If you have any other income, you add the, that amount and then going to minus all the expenses. So this gives you net profit. Net profit. Okay. okay, let us move to the type of transaction that you need to cover, you need to know for this accounting for retailing. I did classify this item into two categories. The first one is the basic transaction, the basic transaction. The second one is the more advanced transaction. For the basic transaction, you only have seven. You only have seven. If you know all these seven, you'll get full mark for this question in your final five six seven type of transactions okay let us go one by one using the perpetual inventory system okay before that let me read what are the types of transaction the first one is purchase inventory how to purchase how to record purchase of inventory number two is return purchase inventory you purchase the inventory maybe you return some of it Next is sales, sales and sales return. Okay, always remember for sales and sales return. Yeah, I put here two times when you need to do two journal entries, two set of journal entries. Yeah, for the advanced one, this is easy. 
payment received from sub customer, payment made to the supplier, and finally is stop loss. So if you have any questions, yeah, any confusions relating to these topics, please go back to this slide and check which one, which of the one, which one from the seven that cause you a problems. Okay, let us go one by one. A simple example, calculator. I believe every one of you have in your, your calculator now. Before the exam, you need to go to the library or the registrar office to get the stamp for your calculator. We are selling this calculator. I'm selling this calculator to all the students during the exam week at price of $80. Who don't have the calculator, they come to see me. They need to buy me at price of $80. The purchase price, the cost for me is only $50. So the gross profit per calculator is $30. Are you okay with that? Okay. So remember this, register this in your memory. Purchase price is $50. The selling price is $80. Purchase price is $50. Selling price is $80. The first transaction, the first transactions, okay. Purchase 20 units of calculator. This is transaction number one. Yeah. Purchase 20 units of calculator. I purchase 20 units of calculator from my supplier. It can be by using cash or on credit. Okay. So this is 20 units of calculator. Yeah. The price of it is 50. So what is the value? The value will be 20 multiplies by $50 so that give me 1000 every time i purchase my inventory my inventory level or amount will increase before this i have zero inventory now i'm adding plus 1000 always remember that this inventory is your assets. So when asset increase, you're going to debit, you're going to debit your inventory. So I'm debit my inventory. This is debit inventory, 1000, your cash and account payable. If I paid by cash, my cash will reduce. Cash is asset. If I make by cash, the cash will reduce. If I don't make, if I uh, purchase on credit, my liability, this is your liability, will increase. So this will affect either uh, cash account or account payable account. So this is the credit 1000. Credit 1000. This is transaction number one. You have to remember this. Purchase inventory under perpetual inventory system. I'm showing you the perpetual inventory system. Yeah, perpetual inventory system. You're going to debit inventory, credit cash, or account payable. What is the amount? 1,000. How do I get 1,000? 20 multiplies by 50. Okay, four transactions. For transaction number two is, for example, we return one unit of the calculators, one unit of the calculator to the supplier, whereby we purchase before this 50 unit. Remember that? Right? We purchase before this 50 unit, not $50, 20 units. Now, we are not happy with the packaging. Maybe the box is not good. Maybe the model is wrong. So we decided to return one unit back to our supplier. Okay. If before this, if before this you make payment by cash, if before this you make payment by cash, when you return the inventory uh, calculator to your supplier, you will ask, give me back my cash. So you're going to debit your cash. You're going to debit your, your cash. But if before this, you purchase on credit, you'll ask them to reduce, to deduct your liability or account. 
payable. So your account payable will reduce or your cash will increase. Depend on the questions. What happened to your inventory balance? This is your asset. When you return the inventory, before this you have 20. Now you minus by 1. So you're going to reduce your inventory by 1. So now your total balance of inventory is only 19 units. So I'm going to reduce my inventory. So this will be credit. Reduce inventory. Why? Asset plus minus. This is for assets. So the answer for this kind of transaction will be debit cash or account payable credit inventories by $50. Yeah? By $50. The amount of inventory return is 1 multiplies by $50.